No, I think that was made that way by design at the factory because uh, both of them are made the exact same way and it actually looks like the little brass piece even is pinned to that in some way that looks more uh, like a factory type of thing than a homemade deal. So, so the next question is, how does this come off? I mean, the reality is, the way that ended up coming off, I didn't have to even loosen this screw. I could have left this just the way it is, because now, with, with that off, I can take this big bracket off, I think. No, I can't. What can I? Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to get to. you got to take this big bracket off to take this chain off. I just left the chain hanging like that. I just left the chain hanging like that. Do I really need to take any of this off to remove the headstock? Doesn't look it. Doesn't look like I would have to. This. Tell you what, this bracket right here almost looks like it's touching that gear. Just brought some more light over here and changed the camera angle and zoomed in. See this breast of this adjustable banjo bracket? Well, it's not really a banjo bracket, but this slotted bracket right here. Obviously, you loosen this nut to move this in and out and engage it. This is pushed up so far that this end right here. I can see I can see light. I can see light through there. So this is not touching these teeth, but it is <laughs> I mean it is really close. Really close. Let's see if I can stick a screwdriver blade in there. That 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 is close. Wow. I wonder if that's by design. Boy, if the inside of this slot was a little more worn on that end, I could see where you could accidentally put this up too high. Of course, the limiting factor is that this going up makes this gear mesh with nothing. Makes this gear mesh with this gear. So the reality is that. Yeah, I mean, you really can't move that up any further, but I'll, you can probably get close enough that that might rub on that. I wonder if that's got any signs that it's ever been rubbing. rubbing. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's close, though, real close. All right, so I lifted the headstock straight up, theoretically. This shaft with its gears would just lift right up, as would this whole assembly right here. So this whole headstock might be able to be pulled without doing any of the stuff I was just contemplating doing. However, these square headed bolts that hold the headstock on, on this end, one of them's buried behind here and the other one's underneath here. If they were regular bolts, I could probably get a socket wrench on an extension and stick it up there. But I don't know if I've got a multi-point socket that's going to fit up there. And, that being said, look at the grease and grime on this. This needs to go in the parts washer, really, so I might as well just uh, do it. Pull this off. Easier said than done. If I loosen this bolt, that'll allow this to slide down when I loosen this, uh, this nut and this nut. But this bracket I just looked underneath here is actually a much larger bracket that goes... See, that's in a slotted hole too. The pivot point for this whole bracket is up underneath here, behind this whole box assembly right here. But this box assembly almost looks like it comes off fairly easily. In other words, this is the quick change gearbox is behind here, which I think I read somewhere that that's actually a, called a Norton style, or is it Norton? Or Pratt Whitney? I don't know. Anyways, uh, I'm thinking I could take this whole assembly right here right off. 
Well, there's a screw over here. I loosened it, came out fairly easily. This one loosened it, came out fairly easily. This isn't budging, but it makes sense to me that those, if there's two screws on the top, it's going to be something on the bottom. I can't see anything. This is actually open on the bottom. So I'm thinking maybe this nut right here that's buried in grease. Looks like that's a stud that it's on. That also acts as probably it's the shaft into the shaft for this gear to ride on. Don't know. And maybe that nut. And then we got a screw on the end here, but that's really tight. I'm not going to mess with that just yet. I'm going to try loosening that nut and see what happens. Uh, so get a load of this. It's too large of a nut for three quarter, which is 12 sixteenths. And it's awfully sloppy for 13 sixteenths. So the heck is this? Let's see, 13 sixteenths is uh, 26 30 seconds. So 25 30 seconds? That doesn't make sense. Well, it's after lunch and uh, it almost seems like a 20 millimeter uh, socket would fit, or 20 millimeter wrench would fit on there. Can't use a socket because uh, it's too close to this. Uh, this edge right here to get a socket on there and I don't have a 20 millimeter open end wrench so uh, rather than spend all afternoon trying to figure out how to get this off I just since it's not seized on there I just gotta use these vice grips to get it off. Actually, I actually I can use my hands now as soon as I get some gloves on huh funny thing this wrench this rusty old wrench that I found that I actually had in that $10 toolbox find at the flea market is a perfect fit for this nut. So what the heck is going on here? I gotta see what size this wrench is. But uh, right now, I'm just thrilled that it's working. I wonder if there's just so much grease and paint on there that the other wrench is too tight. I'll double check that in a minute. Either that or I've got a wrench that's got something wrong with it. All right, let's see. This wrench is a perfect fit for this nut. It is. 28, 30 seconds. All right, is that what it is? This old wrench is 25, 30 seconds on that side. I don't know what size it is on the other side, but this rusty old thing is going in my toolbox. Yeah, it's going in my toolbox because I know I don't have any 25, 30 second inch open end wrenches. Uh, matter of fact, I don't have too many wrenches that are in the 36. Uh, you know, that uh, fractional size. Most of them in the set are, you know, they're either eighth inch or sixteenth inch. So, I guess eventually I'll want to fill in those missing sixteenths with various finds at the old flea market etc. But it does look like this whole thing's coming off pretty easily. Looks like whatever this screw does, it's not involved in my current needs. Spoke too soon. Gotta get underneath there and look again. Okay, what I did was I just <coughs> disengaged the handle from the uh, lock position up here. And that let me pull this all the way off this way. So what's the deal here? Pick up and off. There we go. Sweet. That's how that comes off. And yeah, that uh, screw on the end that I didn't take off, obviously that would be to uh, remove the shaft to take this all apart. 
but we'll keep that just like that for now. And that gear is not going to just slip off. Hey, check it out. Here's a collar right here with a set screw in it. I wonder if I took that off, whether or not that whole lead screw. This is the end of the lead screw, by the way, right here. I wonder if that whole lead screw would slide out. But I'd be scared to do that without taking this top cover off the quick change gearbox first because this probably is going through a whole stack of gears inside here. And if I draw the uh, lead screw out, they might just fall out or fall out of position. And I want to at least see what, what that looks like in there before I did that, which that means taking this cover off, which that cover, I don't even think I can get that cover off with the headstock on there. So headstock first, cover for the uh, quick change gearbox and lead screw and all that later. So. Uh, this gear this gear looks like it would slide right off if this gear wasn't on here so what's holding this gear on I wonder Maybe underneath all this gunk on the back side, maybe there's a set screw that I'm missing. Okay, I just loosened the two nuts on the uh, slotted part of this uh, right here, and that allowed this the bracket to drop down. Now, that bracket and this gear, this idler gear assembly right here, is not going to be able to come off because it's pivoting on this shaft, which is behind this gear. This gear will not come off because it just, just barely will not clear this gear. So if I wanted to take the bracket off, I need to take this off. If I want to take this off, I need to take this off. And this is the mystery right now because I can't see a set screw on the back here that's holding this on. I can't feel one through the grease either. So I don't know what the deal is there. I'm thinking maybe I'll, I'll clean that up a little bit just to verify, but right now it doesn't look like it's there. I could put a puller on here, but that, that's dangerous because if I'm wrong about that just being a press fit on there and nothing else holding that, then I could easily break this gear and then I'd well, I'd probably, you'd probably see a grown man cry at that point, so we're not going to do that. With that bracket drop down, I think I can get onto the two bolt heads that I see underneath there. Uh, there might even be enough clearance in there for a socket. They're square-headed bolts, but I'll tell you... Uh, if I get a uh, 10 or a 12 point socket, I might be able to find one that'll fit on there. I had a 3 quarter inch socket and I uh, was able to get that to fit on there and I was able to actually reach up in there and loosen the left hand one, but this right hand one's being a little more stubborn, so I just... Alright, this 13 16 inch socket is actually a better fit. It's sloppy, but I can fully, I can feed it all the way down onto the head, so it's actually gripping better. The 3 quarter inch was not able to slip all the way down, so it's running shallow. It's amazing to me how tight this bolt is, and how loose the other one was. Quite the alignment issue because this basically is a V here. It sits right on the way. Right on the prismatic part of the, the rear wings. Thank goodness for that because I can imagine. Oops. I can line this. <laughs> Down, obviously, yeah. All right, now over here on the spindle side of the headstock, there are two more square bolts 
here and here. And I think that's all that holds this headstock on, except for maybe the linkage for uh, one of the drives. I'll deal with that. Let me get these undone first. Now normally I could put a long extension on and reach up from the bottom if the bed was still on the legs, but because I've already got the bed off of the legs and it's sitting on this uh, roll around, I really can't do that. So hopefully I'll be able to just get in here with a uh, maybe a flex head ratchet. All right, I uh, just remembered that I only had I think one flex head ratchet and it was a cheap piece of junk and it broke. I think. Anyways, it's been a long time since I used it. Can't find it. I think I remember breaking and never replacing it. it wasn't a good quality one anyways. So I just got in there with the breaker bar and was able to loosen that and get it started and I think I can just get in there and take one million short strokes with the ratchet to get this one out. I got this side. The other side remains to be seen. Here, the ratcheting action stop, then I know that it should be close to finger tight. And that seems like right there. Actually, this is a better angle for this, anyways. I am wishing I had rolled up my sleeves. Because this is uber filthy down here. That's a long bolt. Look at the threads on that thing. There we go. And just like on that, that side over there, the rear bolt is shorter. The front bolt is a little longer. So, good to know. All right, now, that, I believe, are the only bolts that actually hold the, uh, hold the headstock onto the, uh, onto the bed. So now I should be able to just lift this right up and pull it off here. <laughs> uh, hey, actually, son of a gun, I was joking. I didn't think I'd be able to move that at all. It is obviously too heavy for me to be picking up, um, but uh, it, that, that's a good sign that I'm on the right track as far as how this comes off. Um. <laughs> All right, now we're going to talk about how we're going to rig the top of this, hook onto it in a manner that's going to be safe for me to pick this up and uh, not break anything. I think while I'm thinking about that, I'll change my gloves. <laughs> 